It's no secret that OTFs, or out-the-front knives, are some of the coolest and most complicated knives out there. But it is a bit of a secret as to how they are made. So we reached out to our buddies over at Axial Knives here in Utah, and they decided to give us a backstage pass, show us the secret sauce on how OTF knives are made. We're super excited, and we got a little secret of our own. Most quality OTFs start their life as a block of aluminum. Specifically, Axial makes their handles out of 60-61 T6 bar stock. Aluminum is a strong, lightweight material that can hold up to the rigors of the OTF mechanism while not making the knife feel like a brick in your pocket. After the bar stock is cut down, it's deburred and prepped for the mill. As with any precision tool, each step in the making of an OTF has to be done not only with the next step in mind, but with an eye to the final product as well. A minor variance in cutting or deburring could set up a handle for failure. Once the bar stock is fully prepared, it heads to the CNC machine, where it undergoes four separate operations. Each of these operations is creating the tracks, cutouts, and end stops that will allow the knife to fire and retract the blade. Axial holds their critical surface tolerances at one one thousandth of an inch. It's safe to say that most of us don't deal in thousandths of an inch very often. So to give you a comparison, a standard sheet of paper is about four thousandth of an inch. So Axial's tolerances are held at a quarter the thickness of a sheet of paper. Once the handles come off the machine, they are checked for tolerance compliance, deburred again, and then tumbled in a media tumbler. The tumbling process helps to smooth out the entire surface of the handles and any sharp edges that may affect action or use. If it's not already obvious, every single step compounds the complexity of an OTF's tolerances. And while we were at Axial, we kept hearing the term stacked tolerances. So to better understand that, we decided to talk with Axial's owner, Colby. All right, Colby, so I think we can both agree any quality OTF is going to be paying attention to the tolerances that are going on with the knife. And we've been talking about like tolerance stack. So explain that concept, because I think it's really interesting how you explain it. So when we talk about tolerance stack, we're talking about the combined effect that part tolerance has on the entire assembly. So in an OTF knife, there's half a dozen components inside that handle that are interfacing and have to work together. And so when we're looking at tolerances, we approach it in a couple of ways. Number one, mechanical Fit. All the parts have to go together every single time. And then a step beyond that is mechanical performance. It's dialing the tolerances in to where you get the performance out of the knife that you want. In addition to like mechanical fit and performance, we're looking at surface finish. On the critical areas of our parts, we're set up to do a 20 to 30 RA finish. The smoothness that you guys have and the lockup that you guys have is due to that RA finish. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so for you guys at home, because I didn't know when I started talking to Colby about this, I had no idea what RA stood for, right? But basically like a Swiss watch, the finishes on a Swiss watch, all the mechanisms inside are the critical ones. They're like a 15 to 20 RA. So <laughs> you guys are basically getting like Swiss watch finishes inside of your OTF, yeah, which is yeah. awesome. Like so cool. Yeah. And you notice the difference. All premium OTFs have little bits of magic where you can notice the difference. One of the many that Axial has is in their laser engraving. Axial does a deep laser engraving with all engraving on their handles and blade. This deeper process takes some extra time, but makes it so that logos and knife information will be visible with any color or coating and will not be easily removed from use or abuse. The handles are treated one more time with a glass bead blast before heading out to anodizing. Which brings up an interesting point about knife making. Most knife makers and manufacturers have a handful of partners that help them produce their knives, helping with everything from coatings to heat treat and blade grinding. Axial has intentionally sought out partners, mostly based in Utah and all based in the United States, to pick up a few of these processes. The company that does their anodization is literally 15 minutes up the road. Now let's take a look at the blade process. Each blade is cut from a sheet of whatever your favorite steel is. S35VN, 20CV, crew wear, and even magna cut. Just like with our handles, tolerances are being considered even at this very first step. It takes a lot of steps to get a knife blade the correct size with the correct heat treat and a nice sharp edge. When the blades are cut out of the metal sheet, they are cut out 30 thousandths bigger than they need to be so that through each process, Axial can precisely bring the blade more and more into tolerance. If any step is out of tolerance or isn't handled with exact precision, a whole batch of blades can easily be ruined. There is no faking tolerances when it comes to an OTF. 
After being cut out, the blades are given a rough grind to bring their width into better uniformity, making them more predictable on the mill for different surface features that Axial puts on their blades. After rough grinding is done, the blades are checked and then run on the mill for those critical surface features, and then, as I'm sure you already guessed, they're checked for tolerances again. Once tolerances are confirmed, each blade receives a special mark letting Heat Treat know what steel a given blade is so they know how to treat it. Heat treat and blade grinding are just as much of an art as they are a science. And any knife maker or knife manufacturer worth their salt is gonna use proven players right here in the United States to accomplish both of those ends. And of course, that's exactly what Axial does. So before the blades leave Axial for heat treat, they're gonna look exactly like this drop point blade. Nice and simple, a little bit thicker than they need to be. That's because in the heat treating process, you'll get just a little bit of wobble in the blade. And so after heat treat, they're sent out for blade grinding and that's where the blade becomes kind of more knife blade looking. Your bevels get ground in and you get the blade completely flat and perfect with the double disc process. After heat treating and bevel grinding, blades can be treated a bunch of different ways. Axial specifically offers two blade finishes, stone washed and then DLC coating. The stone washed blades are tumbled after bevel grinding, deep laser engraved, and then sharpened by hand. The coated blades will also be tumbled, deep laser engraved, and then they are sent out for DLC coating to return to Axial for hand sharpening. With all the blades and handles finished, there is still the big consideration of all the internals and small parts that make up an OTF. OTF knives are truly some of the most complicated production knives out there, due in large part not only to their tolerances, but also to the mechanisms that make them work. Triggers have to be made with the same precise consideration as both the handle and the blade so that they function smoothly and properly. When it comes to internals, Axial makes everything out of stainless steel. Your OTF knife is very similar to a box with only one end open. So that stainless steel hardware inside is highly resistant to corrosion and abrasion. This applies to all the OTF internals. To understand the internals of an OTF, we first have to look at the exact parts that make up an OTF. To start, we have our rear locking tab and spring, as well as our front locking tab and spring, our knife blade with the stop pin, and the track assembly, comprised of the front follower, rear follower, track, and firing spring. The rear follower hooks to the back of your knife blade, and the front of the track connects to your trigger. As you push the trigger forward, the rear follower and blade stay in place, and the firing spring stretches until the back of the track overcomes the rear locking tab. This shoots the knife blade out the front of the body and it's caught in the open position by the stop pin in the blade. When you go to close your OTF, it's the exact same function of spring tension, only this time played out on the front locking tab. Finally, the OTF receives a pocket clip and possibly a glass breaker. I personally love how Axial does their pocket clips. They're bent with a die by hand using a torch and a bench vise. And it's this little type of handmade touch that really sets Axial apart in my mind. Another highlight of Axial specifically is they do not use proprietary screws on their OTFs. And in fact, upgraded the hardware from a T6 to a T8 so that people who buy their knives can open them up if they feel the need to. The great thing is that Axial offers an awesome lifetime warranty, so you don't need to take apart your knife unless you really want to. When we first got a look at Axial's operation and got to meet all the awesome guys that run the shop here, we knew two things. One, we really wanted to use this shop to show you guys how an OTF is made just because of the way that Axial's doing it and some of the really awesome things that they have planned moving forward. And two, we knew that we wanted to be a part of what Axial is doing. So I'm super stoked to officially announce our first knife collaboration ever. So this is a Zack in the Wild Axial Shift collaboration. You can only get this pattern and this style in the Zack in the Wild collaboration on Axial's website. So you've got green anodized handle, you have a black coated DLC blade, and then a couple firsts for us, obviously, and Axial, is this is their first Tonto blade, and it's in Magna Cut. So we're really excited to be able to partner with them on this and bring you guys something that we're super stoked on from a company we're super stoked on. Now, the first run of these, there's only gonna be 150 of them. So we're gonna serialize the first 150, and then if we get the chance to do more after, those will not be serialized, obviously. Along with the first 150, me and Jamie will also be putting a little personal handwritten note in every single one of the first 150 serialized versions. We're just super grateful for all the support that you guys give us that gives us opportunities like this. 
Now we've got to get it back to work here so everything's ready for when I say it is. Go get your knife, Axial.com. See you on the next one.